today I'm going to show you how to build the simplest fin plane I can think of. This one doesn't require any wire hydraulics or anything. This is just for the the beginner, I don't know, fin plane maker. What I'm going to use is go down to games, Gary's mod, and go down to hunter. And there you'll find plates. And I, for this particular design, we're just going to use the one half by four or 0.5 by 4 for the wings and for the fuselage I'll just do one that's slightly longer and then we're going to use the precision tool I'm going to weld these let's weld the undersides of these wings to the tops of these we just put these this is not very precise this is just a quick tutorial for those who want to know there you've got your fuselage and your two uh, wings I guess you could say this is going to be acting like a tail but it will provide lift like a wing and you can use these curved pieces for the wing tips we're just going to move these for now And now we're going to use the rotate tool. Let's rotate these oh, 45 degrees. Why not? That might be too much. No, it should be fine. The reason why I'm clicking on the bottom one is so that way it rotates into the prop next to it. And the front ones are going to be angled downwards. Like so. And then we weld these pieces to their respective points. And now, in order to test out any model that you're working on, I'd like to duplicate it and test it out to see how well it uh, is when we test it later with the fin tool. Now, the reason why I have these is so when the aircraft is banking, it can still provide lift and it'll actually bank. Um, without kind of sliding around. Now to provide some more stability in the back we could add a triangle or if you wanted to have something thinner you could go down to squad and use one of the triangles from there. Let's use one of these. These are intended for robotics uses but I don't make robots in Gary's mod very much. We can simply place them. Now remember that these pieces are glitching through each other right now, so you might want to no-collide them. And then weld them in place. And that will act as a vertical stabilizer. Now we're going to go get a vehicle. Say just the jeep seat. We can use precision weld to weld it to the airframe. I like to get in it and check the view and make sure that it's a you know a good observation point that I don't have any large objects obstructing my view. And we can also just disable collisions to prevent things from getting glitchy. And go into wire, vehicle control, pod controller. It used to be called advanced pod controller. And just put one on the back. And you right click to link it to the seat. And now what we can do is go down to physics, force, thruster. That should be about right. You don't want the thruster to be too powerful because then this thing, this contraption of yours will just fly away without any control. And I just chose that for whatever kind of effect you would like for your vehicle. Put it at the center of the back. And what we'll do is we'll go to IO or input output K 
keyboard interaction and we'll get a button or number pad input that allows us to turn on and off to toggle this rear thruster. You can set that to whatever you want. I just have it set to enter for personal preference. That way when we hit enter, it activates the thruster. Now you could do, uh, use normal thrusters for this, but I find it much easier just to use wire thrusters. Go back to physics thruster, and we change this so it's about 100. Of course, whenever I hit enter, it's going to activate. And we change this to the smallest model. It could be a can, but I prefer to use these. And we're going to change the effect to nothing. And these pieces will be the act as the elevators, and these pieces will act as the ailerons, providing force to roll the aircraft or pitch or yaw the aircraft. Now you could add thrusters for the rudder as well, if you so desire. I usually do that for dogfighting aircraft, that way I have better control over the airframe so I can aim the aircraft a lot easier. So this one is going to make the aircraft yaw to the right. So I'm going to put that for mouse 2. Reverse, mouse 1. This one's going to make the aircraft roll to the left. It's going to be A, and same with this one. I want the aircraft to roll to the right. Use D. Oops. You hit reload to unwire the function. Now these ones going to bring the aircraft up, so I'm going to use W for that. You can invert this if you like. Some people prefer it that way. And now your aircraft is completely wired up, but you need the fin tool for this to fly properly. So we're going to put this no lift at about 30, 40. Yeah, we'll just do 30 for now. Right here. That way this will guide the aircraft forward. And do lift by plane normal. We can do 20. For the wing. And then we could also make a lifting body, but we won't do that in this particular tutorial. Because it's a little more complicated. We're also going to put this lift on these wing tips as well. Now the important part comes when we use the weight tool. These this body should be fine. This right now is really heavy, so we're just going to change that to 20. 32, 32. We can also make that 20 as well. And these individual pieces we can make 10. That way they have more influence. They fly. You can also make that 10 if you want. Now, another tool I find really helpful is the total mass tool. I'm going to hit shift, left click and then right click and that shows me the center gravity of this contraption and that that'll fly but I don't like to have the center of gravity too far back because then the stall characteristics are absolutely terrible so what we're gonna do is we're going to get a block uh, this will do and we're simply going to weld the block to the front of the aircraft well that didn't work all right, I'm just going to change this back to my default, which is 15. I don't know why it's doing that. It's really off kilter. Let's use a different block. Much better. Now that this has already welded it, but I like to always double check just in case because sometimes I've had things glitch. Now this front piece needs to weigh a lot more. That way it'll bring the center of gravity towards the front of the aircraft. So once again, total mass brings the center of gravity forward, which will give it a much better stall characteristic. Now we can duplicate this and just fling it with the physics gun and see how it glides. Right now it's not gliding very well. It's because the rear wing is providing more lift than the front wing.
and that weight at the front is also dragging it down. So in order to fix that, what we need to do <coughs> is give the front a little more lift. So we can make this 25. We can duplicate it. Flies a little better. If you really want it to be, you can make the rear. The rear is already at 20. So you can make it way less. Actually, that'd probably be a bad idea. Let's make the rear 18. Oh, it provides less lift. It flies a little straighter. But not quite what I would like it to. So what we can do, bring this back up to 20, and make this a lifting body as well. That way it provides lift on the front a little more. Uh-oh. Not so great. So what we could do is simply make this weight a little more towards the rear, or we can make the front weight a little more as well. It still isn't gliding too well, so I'm just going to make the li front lift a little more powerful. Let's say 27. Much better. Now that will glide without even having the thruster on. Now if we turn the thruster on, it gives it powered flight. Now that has too much lift at the front, so it's my own fault for doing that. So now I will remove some of the power, or some of the lift from the front, I should say. I can make this 22 perhaps. And activate the thruster flies much more predictably. Now you see the stall characteristic isn't the greatest, but it will direct itself towards forward flight. Sort of. So we could experiment on the duplicate as well. Let's say I want this front to be 20. And hit enter. And it flies relatively straight. But what we can do is then just make this 20 and then make the lifting body perhaps, or actually we could just make the front weigh more. So this will weigh 45 instead of 40. Oops. And that should fly relatively straight. Now what we're also going to do is we can create weapons on the front and that'll weigh them down. But as far as this aircraft, it's almost finished. Now this thruster, when it touches the ground, will actually glitch really badly, especially if you save it as a duplicate. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a small tail skip. We can go back to plates, get one of these really small bars. We'll get this one. And we can use precision move. Some of the more complicated things you can do with precision is you can hold down right click and rotate it in different directions. Let's rotate it down that way. That should work just fine. And we simply weld this to the body. And we can make this way more so it's a lot more stiffer. Make it 25. We can add some weight to the front as well. Or actually, you know what? Let's see how this flies. I'm not sure. Now that I've had the, the weight of the tail skid on the back will prevent the thruster from glitching through the world. But I'm not sure what its flight characteristics will be like after that. Stall characteristic? Not so great. Uh, could be worse, but not so great. So let's go back to total mass. Let's see, it's moved farther back. So what we can do is make the weight at the front make this way 60 as well as the body and see how that works seems to work a lot better and the stall characteristic is much more docile so we could safely say that is our finished product 
so far. Now in order to save it, you simply right click, show save duplications, and hit save duplicate. And you can deploy your duplicate, and freeze it, and you have a working aircraft. Now we're going to do a quick maiden flight by actually sitting down the seat, activating the thruster, and now we have control over the aircraft using W, A, S, and D. Now this is really, really twitchy. I made the thrusters that control the different flight surfaces way too sensitive. With the exception of the rudder, the rudder is not sensitive at all. So in order to change that, shot the thruster, and this aircraft will actually glide with relative ease. Now to fix the twitchiness of this aircraft, we can go down to the thrusters again, and simply make them half as powerful, or a little less than half as powerful. And the reason why I have it checked for it just works out of water, so that way if you crash your plane into a lake or something, it won't just fly underwater like a giant flying submarine. Some people might want that, but I think it's just a little bit overpowered. We can make these 200 for the rudder control because this needs to be more powerful. If anything, we could actually make this way less as well. And now we can duplicate it. Save the duplicate. It's usually best to save your duplicates just in case so that way they don't get destroyed or lost. Right, Let's see if this thing flies. Um, it's a little sluggish now, but the roll rate is a lot easier to control. I can bank and everything. I can use the rudder control a lot easier. It's a little, still a little spastic. It has a much faster upwards tendency to fly, but I can fly inverted pretty easily. And there you have it. There is your fin plane. Now, if you want to balance it, you can. You can make it tweak it using the weight tool and using the uh, fin tool to create whatever kind of flight characteristics you like. And as long as you follow some basic flight principles, you could create an aircraft in virtually any shape you want it to be. As long as you f have the right center of gravity and center of lift principles in place. And there's also many different armaments that you can have on your fin planes as well. Um, just ignore my spazzing engine, but uh, this particular fin plane has rockets from the G-bombs pack that you can add that will actually fire somewhat realistically. And you could weld these rockets to your aircraft, and when you fire them, they automatically detach themselves. In order to wire a rocket to your aircraft, you would once again freeze it, go to the G-Bombs tab, pick a rocket that's relatively small and lightweight, because this is a very small and lightweight aircraft, say the R4M, for example, and you don't want it to be exactly touching it, you want it to be hovering just a little bit off, where, uh, off of your aircraft, that way it does not collide with your aircraft when it fires, and you wire launch to whatever key you'd want it to be. For example, I could hit R for rocket or spacebar. Set it down gently. Get into your aircraft and fly away. And then if you were, for example, had a certain target in your sights, oh, let me just scrape the ground for a second. You could hit that key that you assigned it to and fire the rocket. Now, I'm actually banking really hard right now, and that's why the rocket, when it released, curved because it was released from a curving aircraft. Real life rockets don't necessarily work that way, but in this game that's just something that happens to them. Um, the AS, whatever kind of rocket, anti-air type rockets that this uses will not do that, because when it fires, it actually drops and then takes off. Another such armament that you could attach to your aircraft would be the Pew Pew weapons from the Pew Pew version 2. Yeah, I know it sounds silly. Add-on. 
Um, these are relatively easy to use. Select, for example, machine guns. You could use a very basic machine gun and simply attach them to your aircraft and they'll automatically weld. And then you go to wire advanced and you could fire them using whatever key you assign them to. Once again, I'm just going to use space. Unfreeze your aircraft, get in, start up the engine, and whenever you hit space bar, it fires the machine guns from your aircraft. Now, the PP version 2 has bombs, it has rockets, it has... heck, it even has torpedoes, but these weapons will destroy bombs. So, they are very effective when you have uh, Gary's mod battles and engagements and things of that nature that you can actually destroy an enemy vehicle or an opponent's vehicle by using these types of weapons. And these are the types of weapons I really enjoy using for uh, Gary's Mod type fights. Now there is a much more recent add-on that has come to my attention that you can use in Gary's Mod battles as well, but it is very glitchy right now, and that would be the Seat Weaponizer tool. You can get it on the Steam Workshop right now, and what it does is it simply allows you to use weapons from your seat, which is something I kind of wanted from the very be beginning of Gary's Mod. And you could click to weaponize the seat, and I can use my physics gun from the seat or any other weapon. But there are glitches that happen with this. Um, in multiplayer, it doesn't seem to work very well right now. I noticed that when I scroll to zoom out, it cycles all my weapons. And when I fire the machine gun, when the aircraft is actually flying, it the bullets, just like with normal uh, wire turrets, will actually fire and then glitch and shoot my own plane like they are right now. You can see the hit effects come from my actually... Oh, that's weird. They're like floating in midair. And also, where you're aiming doesn't necessarily correlate to where the actual reticle is. And so the reticle right now is showing where the weapon is actually aiming. And so I could score hits on the ground by actually using the reticle, but if I were to zoom in, the reticle is not where my aircraft is actually shooting right now. I mean, where my uh, weapon. And don't use rocket launchers. They will actually fly back and hit your own plane like this. Which is just lovely. Alright, well thank you for watching this very basic Gary's Mod Finplane tutorial. Um, future tutorials will likely be about aircraft of this nature where they have actual moving control surfaces and um, more complicated flight systems using Fintool to control the aircraft's movement as opposed to thrusters. But yeah, I think I'm looking forward to some of the future Gary's Mod tutorials, as well as perhaps posting videos that aren't about video games for once. And I've, well, I've enjoyed making videos like this, and I hope that uh, anyone who has any more questions can send me more uh, comments that ask, you know, hey, how do you build this, how do you build that, where did you get this tool, and what's it called? Those kind of questions I think are very helpful. Um, don't be afraid to ask them. And yeah, that should be the end of this.